In this How to Svelte, we're going to make a video window float, which you may recognize from some news websites that have videos. As soon as you scroll down, a floating video window shows up. So we'll go ahead and make that with a generic website and we'll add some video and um, we'll do it all in the Svelte REPL. And the idea is that as we scroll down to a certain point, then video should show up. And we can click the X to clear it, continue to scroll, head back to the top, it resets itself. And then as we scroll down again, we get the same effect. So let's go ahead and start off with a blank Svelte REPL. And what we'll do is we'll copy and paste. We'll go over to W3 Schools and copy and paste a generic website here. If you go to their how-to section, look for make a website. And what we'll do is we'll just grab the content from here. In fact, come down here to try it yourself. And let's go ahead and copy the CSS and the HTML over to the Svelte REPL. Then we can go ahead and clean up some of these errors as well as remove any unnecessary CSS. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take this header here and replace this content here with some video content. Okay, so we have our video HTML, and we just need to go out and get a video of sorts. Uh, I found some things at iStock, and if I just right-click on the video, I can copy the video address, and then paste that into the source. Then we'll add some CSS to clean this up. Then we're receiving an error about about an element called track with an attribute of kind. Good, that gets rid of the error. Okay, so we now have our video with our web page, and as we scroll down, our next goal is to get the video window to show up here as we move past this area. But first, before that, let's go ahead and break some of this off into components so we don't have so much CSS in our app file. And so I'm going to take everything below the nav bar and put that in its own component. Now I'll go ahead and import these components into the app component. Good. So we have basically the same website, but now we just don't have so much content in our app component, make it a little bit easier to look at what's going on. The next thing we want to do is, because the goal of our project is to make this video container show up in the lower uh, right-hand corner, and we're only going to do that on scroll, we need to look into ways to monitor how we're going to scroll the page and monitor where um, the scroll position is also known as a page Y offset. So first what we're going to do is we're going to use a special Svelte component called Svelte Window. We can use an attribute called Scroll Y. And what we'll do is we'll bind the value of Scroll Y to a variable that we'll create. And we'll just call that variable Y. And we'll go ahead and reactively console log Y so we can see what it produces. So if I clear the console and start scrolling, you can see that this is now tracking scroll Y. 
And scroll Y represents the amount of space that we've scrolled down from this top left area. So to learn more about what scroll Y is, if you go to the JS output and see what they're actually using under the hood, you'll notice on window scroll, we're using the window objects page Y offset. So that's what's actually what's happening under the hood is we're monitoring that and we're storing it into a variable here called Y and console logging Y, which is why we can see those numbers down here. So now that we have that information, what we need to do is now just provide a rule that when we scroll down X amount, let's say when the video is no longer seen at the top, this is when we should put the video down there. So where is that at? That's about 408. And what we'll do is we'll resize this video by adding a class to the video container. And so when we add this class, it will basically take the width and height of this and shrink it down. And then we'll add a position fixed, which will just fix it into the bottom right part of the screen. And so just to test that out, let's go ahead and put this up here on the video container. And as soon as we do that, you can see it shows up down here. So this is the effect we want to have once scroll Y hits a certain point. So let's go ahead and use some Svelte syntax to add a class dynamically. And we'll do it when some condition here evaluates to true. And we'll come up here into the script tags and call this show float. So back down here in our HTML, we'll add the class float when show float is true. And so let's just try that. We'll set it to true and as soon as we do, it becomes that. Set it back to false for now. The other thing we wanna do is look at this inner video player probably also want to control the size of that as well. So we'll do that via a class as well. And we'll call this class small player. And it just reworks the width and the height of the video. And we'll add that small player class here to the video. Again, when show float evaluates to true. So at this point, let's go ahead and break our video component away from our app component. We'll call this video player. And we'll take the div with an ID of video container. We'll take all of this out and move it over to video player. Then we'll take video player and export it or import it into app. Now we're getting some errors that show float is not defined. And so we need to go ahead and put that same variable inside the video player. And we'll export that value. So now instead of the controlling the true and false in video player, what we'll do is we'll control that value inside of app. And instead of reactively console logging Y, we'll also, let's go ahead and just comment that out. And what we'll do is we'll, as Y changes, let's reactively monitor it and say that when Y is, let's say, greater than 400, then we'll take show float and assign it to true. Else show float should be false. So because of this reactive Svelte variable, as I scroll and get down to 400, oh, it's saying here that I forgot to put the prop in here of show float. So let's add that. Remember before we had exported that prop. So, so now that that prop's being going through, let's try this again. So we're at the top here and let's see, Actually here, I'll un, un 
comment the console log. And let's see when the float pops in right there. And if we come down here, we can see it's greater than 400. And that's exactly the rule we had here. So as, as I come back up, then the float disappears. So it looks like it's working just fine. Now, the one option that we want to have is as we're scrolling down, if the user doesn't want to see this video here, we should have a little closing icon that they can close it and get rid of it. So let's go ahead and add that to the video player. So we have our opening div, and just right below that, that's where we'll go ahead and put another div with the closer icon. Then I'll add some CSS. Good, and you can see we can see the X, the closing icon here. So now, of course, when I click it, nothing works yet. So let's go ahead and set that up. So here's the div for, of our X. Let's add an on-click event listener. Well, actually, instead of filling the, the event handler out, what we'll do is we'll just forward this event listener up to app. And inside video player, this is where we'll go ahead and fill out the event listener. And we probably want to just say whatever show float value is, we'll set it to the opposite. Or actually, we'll just uh, assign it to false. How about that? So now when we start at the top, we scroll down. Video player shows up. If I click it, it disappears. And then I start scrolling and uh-oh, it keeps coming back again. So it is working that we're showing that we're turning show float to false. But as soon as I scroll, this rule still applies. The scroll Y is greater than 400. So it automatically changes show float to true again. So this isn't exactly working for us to do it this way. So what we can do instead is instead of putting the on click here, let's maybe just Instead of handling the logic of closing the small video player in the app component, let's handle that logic inside video player. Um, and so let's go back to our on click again, and we can fill out the uh, event handler, and we'll call this uh, hide small player. And then the script tags is we just want to remove that small player no matter what, no matter what the value of show float is, we just want to remove it from the DOM as we keep scrolling down, reading our web page, And then show float will reset again once we get back to the top because of this particular rule we have in the app component. So more or less what we're trying to say is we just want to shut this player down. And the way we can do that is we'll create two variables here. One will be the video container, and one will be the video player. And so we can take these variables, and now inside this div here called video container, let's make another, we'll make another directive called bind, and we'll bind it to this. This refers to this div element. But we're going to bind this, this div element, to this variable video container. Now, inside of our event handler function, we can use this variable that we created, which is now bound to this div element. And we can now go ahead and say, let's see, class list dot remove float. So again, we're forcibly removing this float class that we're adding based on show float. In this case, we're just going to ignore show float completely and just remove the class. And we're going to do the same thing with video player. We'll bind this element to this variable we created called video player. And we'll do the same thing. We'll say video player dot class list dot remove. And if you're familiar with vanilla JavaScript, then you, you already know cla what class list and remove is. And in this case, we're going to remove here this small SM player that we added. 
So we're at the top, we scroll down, I click it, it removes it. Now I can keep scrolling and the show float Boolean is no longer being affected here, but I can go all the way to the top again. And now that I'm at the top again, um, this rule here will kick into effect. I'm now less than 400. So show float is now false. And now if I scroll down again, I'll get the same effect. But one thing I noticed, which you may have noticed as well, is when I get to the top, the icon is still showing. So <laughs> we need to hide that icon. And we can do that with a simple if block. If show floats true, then show this icon. So we scroll down, we get our video window float. I don't want to see this anymore, so I click it. I can keep scrolling, reading my articles, I'm ready to go back to the top again. Now at this point, show float is false. And that's because of this rule here. As long as Y, the scroll Y is less than 400, show float becomes false. And, become, and because show float is false, then this if block, which is the X closer, won't show here. Scroll down again, I get my video player. Scroll back up, it goes away. Now the last thing we could do is we could put a little bit of a transition on this. Uh, we don't necessarily need to use Svelte transitions. We probably just add a little bit of a, a tweak to our float class. So now that when I scroll down, I've got this little animation that will have the element enter from the right. And that's how you can make a video window float using Svelte.